I had a poster of Lord of the Rings when I was a kid. That was way before the movies came out. If you'd read Lord of the Rings, it was quite a cool thing, you know. My first exposure to Lord of the Rings was realizing I needed to run to the bookstore to discover something about this Tolkien or Tolkien. And the person in the bookstore said, Tolkien? I said, yeah, sort of feeling stupid. And they brought me over and showed me, you know, here's a whole shelf and there you go there's like 50 things it is incredible the kind of cultural force that the lord of the rings continues to be in the 50 years since they've been published the lord of the rings has sold over 150 million copies and the movies of course were some of the top grossing movies of all time over 5.9 billion dollars in sales i'm a pretty big lord of the rings fan i don't dress up like any of the characters, but uh, just short of that. I love Tolkien, and always have. It's the greatest fantasy thing ever. When I was a kid, we would listen to the Hobbit audio tapes and the Lord of the Rings audio tapes. And the book has always been kind of a, a pretty significant feature in our house. When Return of the King came out, I started crying when the opening sequences rolled. That's how big a fan I am. It's got a love story, it's got battles, it's got the fight of good against evil, it's got, you know, how do you make decisions, how do those decisions influence people around you and influence the world around you, you know? So it's a, it's a very big book in that regard. I was waiting with bated breath for the movies probably from when I first heard they were in production. The Two Towers I probably watched at least 25 times, and I probably watched Return of the King about 30, 35 times. Fellowship of the Ring, I saw in theaters once a week for an entire month with my mom. I feel like every dude wanted to be Aragorn until the movies came out, and then everyone was like, Legolas, Legolas, but no, diehard Aragorn fan all the way for me. He was tall, dark, mysterious, maybe. Maybe I had a crush on Aragorn, and I'm realizing that now. <laughs> when the standoff between Gandalf and the Balrog happen, and he has that, that amazing line, like, you shall not pass, and then he falls, and you're like, Gandalf died, and then you're like, no, he doesn't. He comes back as the White Wizard. Love that part, too. As much as it is about adventure and, and fighting and wars and everything else, ultimately what he was writing was about how precious it is to to have, uh, precious is probably the wrong word to use, precious. So I ordered from Skyball the replica of the ring and I wore it on a necklace for about a year. That was an interesting year of my life. If you love Tolkien or Peter Jackson's movies, um, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, War in the North is the, just a fantastic opportunity to get to explore more of Middle Earth does such a good job of staying true to this world, to these characters. Within the story, we developed different personalities, and we, we were very conscious of trying to come up with personalities that would complement each other. And once again, that authenticity is very important. We won't be going back that way, I'm thinking. The look and feel of a game for me is a deal breaker. If the environments don't feel immersive and look great, then I get really annoyed. And I have to say that the look and feel of War in the North is it's beautiful. There's such an array of places where they travel to. It gives you the opportunity to, to see environments and explore places, things which are just names in the books, like Fornost, for instance, the ruined city of the Dunedain. And you actually get to go and travel in it. They made you feel as if you're in the Mirkwood or running around in Mount Gundabad. These are places that you've read about or seen in the movies, and they look and feel a lot like that in the game. I like the organic feel of it, you know, the, the castle walls are kind of crumbling down and the bows and arrows are made of pieces of wood. You know, it's not all really slick and, and kind of polished. Expect to see some very familiar faces from the films, but also some from the books that weren't in the films that no one's really seen before. I present to you Eladan and Elrohir, the sons of Elrond Hathaven. Lord of the Rings brings out the best in artists. And I think this game is another example of how much it means to the people who are designing them. The second I sat down in front of the game, I knew I was playing a Lord of the Rings game. If it didn't say it was a Lord of the Rings game, I'd say, why are these guys ripping off Lord of the Rings?